Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking about um, recommenders, and I'm going to show you an example, a simple example of how a recommender works. Um, this is going to be definitely not the best way to implement a recommender. If you are interested in recommenders, there, I'm going to link a bunch of work into the class uh, from Sean Owen. I definitely recommend you check out um, Sean's recommenders. <laughs> um, Anyway, I'm going to show you a simple way, and this is a way that's pretty easy to understand. Um, today we're going to be using the Movie Lens data set, and so this is data from movies. Um, if you can see, I'm importing two Pandas data frames. The first one is Movies, and inside of here what you'll see is that there's a movie ID, an associated title, and then a genre. Um, in the second uh, data frame, what I have is a user ID, a movie ID, and a rating. So how to interpret this is user ID 1 rated movie ID 6, a 2, user ID 1 rated movie ID 22, a 3, and so on. You get it. All right, that's probably a pretty decent data set, but it's hard for us to interpret um, movie 6 and movie 22. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this function to replace the IDs with names. And so you can see I did that here. And what I have now is user ID 1 re rated um, the movie Heat a 2, and user ID 1 rated the movie Copycat a 3, and so on. Okay, so that's great, but what I want to really get to is a matrix of users by movies. And so I'm going to use this pivot table command in Pandas. It's very powerful to do that. I'm going to run that. And then what you'll see is I have a 706 users by 8,551 ma uh, movie matrix. And you can see some of that here. Now, this is pretty hard to read because it's very sparse. It's mostly NANs, which means there's not a number. There wasn't a rating, right? Because not every person has seen every movie. In fact, we have to go down to person number 13 here uh, before we get to one that we can see. And you can see that person 13 rated the movie 500 Days of Summer a 4. All right, very good. Um, now, I'm not going to use any fancy machine learning here. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use Pearson's R. If you remember back from Stats 101, Pearson's R is pretty simple to calculate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each X value and I'm going to subtract the mean, each Y value and subtract the mean. And X and Y here are just going to be two different um, variables, so you can think of them as two different movies in our use case. Um, so I'm going to take all of the x values subtract the uh, the mean all of the y values subtract the mean divide by the standard deviation of x multiplied by the standard deviation of y and that's going to give me r and r is going to be 1 for strongly correlated data it's going to be negative 1 for negatively strong correlations it's going to be 0 for no correlations meaning two variables have nothing to do with each other so if if the if r was 1 that means that uh when the rating was high for one movie, it would likely be high for the other. You get the idea. So how we can apply that to our um, movies is we can say we can treat this as X and this is Y. And so we can calculate the Pearson's R between both of them. And if they are, if it's closer to one, then that means that someone who likes this movie would probably like this movie as well. Um, based on all of the other people that have watched the movie. So what we can do is we can use the combined ratings of all of these movies as sort of a collaborative filter to um, predict someone, someone's like of one movie based on another movie or predict movies that are similar to one another. And that's how we're mostly going to be using it today. All right, so you can see that I implemented Pearson, um, Pearson's R here. This is a pretty simple implementation of it. Um, I'll let you go through it if you'd like. And I'm going to show you here a couple of calculations using that method. So I'm going to calculate the Pearson similarity between two movies, The Burbs, and 10 Things I Hate About You. This is an interesting one because um, other than these both being comedies, I didn't really think that they would appeal to the same crowd. It turns out that you get about a .224. Well, is that good or is that bad? I don't know, not off the top of my head, but um, I can kind of use some baselines here. It's probably safe to assume that people that like Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone would also like Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Makes sense, they're the same in the same series. You see that those two actually only have a correlation coefficient of 0.26. So actually, so far, it looks like these two movies are pretty strongly correlated. 
Um, so let me try and find an anti-case for that. Um, I'm going to try and compare Mission Impossible 2 and Aaron Brockovich. So these are two very different movies. One is a awful action movie. The other one is a thought-provoking um, movie that probably appeal, up, appeals more to, uh, to females. All right. You can see that these two movies actually have a negative correlation coefficient. So people that like one are li unlikely to like the other and vice versa. So if I were to rate Mission Impossible high, I would likely rate Erin Brockovich low or vice versa. All right, so I'm going to try one more time, and this is with the movies Clerks and Mallrats, which are both um, cult fav favorites by um, Kevin Smith, a pretty interesting eclectic director. Check these movies out if you haven't seen them. And you can see that people, um, this is actually pretty strongly correlated based on what we've previously seen. So you can see that Clerks and Mallrats are very similar um, in, in likes, if you want to think about it that way. Okay, but this one-by-one one movie thing is probably not the most efficient way to do things. So what I did is I wrote this little function called GitRex. And what GitRex does is it takes a movie name, and then it's going to take the matrix that we have, the, the user by uh, movie matrix, and finally a number, and this is going to be the number of uh, recommendations to return. And so what it's going to do is it's going to go for each title in, the, in all of the movies, um, first of all, don't rate yourself, because that should be a pretty strong correlation. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the correlation. And as long as the correlation isn't NAN, which means that there is a number, there is actually some, uh, there is exactly one person, or there's at least one person in the data set who has watched both of these movies, uh, we're going to append a tuple to my review array that's going to contain the title and the correlation coefficient. Um, lastly, we're going to sort that in reverse order so that we get the strongest correlations first, and we're going to return only um, num of them. So this is a little bit of uh, array slicing. Okay, so let's get the top 10 movies that are correlated with the movie Clerks. It's going to take just a second because it has to run 8,551 um, separate correlation coefficients, quite a few. You could, by the way, compute every movie versus every other movie, or every user versus every other user. Um, if you were going to do that, Python is no longer your tool. You've moved into the big data space, and you want to use something like Apache Mirix, or Apache Spark, or one of these, um, even Mahout it has an older uh, recommender. You want to use one of these like big data recommenders to do something that's really at scale here. All right, so the top 10 recommendations for the movie Clerks are Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which is um, unsurprising. This is a Kevin Smith movie. Mallrats, um, another Kevin Smith movie. Uh, these other ones, um, Pink Flamingos, and yeah, you know, I'm not super familiar with some of those. I have seen a few of these. Um, they're all a little bit offbeat. I'm not surprised that that, that sounds about right. I think those are probably pretty good recommendations. All right. One other thing that I can show you is I want to show you how to get the uh, use the opposite of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate uh, all the recommendations for all 8,551 movies. And then what I'm going to do is I want only the last 10. And so this is going to give me the 10 that are least correlated. That's going to take just a second. All right. And here are the 10 that are the least correlated. So people that like these movies are, are the least likely to like Clerks. And you can interpret it that way. All right, so that is the basics of a recommender, a collaborative filter in this case. And I hope you thought that was cool. Um, there's a lot of, like I said, better ways to do this. But this is a really intuitive way to, uh, to start with recommenders. I don't personally use a lot of recommenders, but they are very important, um, especially for ad placement and monetizing websites. So I did want to mention them. I wanted us to spend a little bit of time on them. And uh, thanks for listening.